So a little birdie told me that you've never heard of my pomegranate cake. Kind of embarrassing. Let me catch you up. Imagine this. Fresh pomegranate, pound cake, and jelly have a cake baby. And then on top of that cake baby, we put brown butter pomegranate icing. I mean, no more words. Let's just get into it. Now this cake is not just your throw together box cake that's gonna take 20 minutes. This cake is made with love and fresh pomegranate. So it takes a little bit of time, but it is guaranteed worth it. First thing we're gonna do is de-seed our pomegranates. The best way that I do this is to slice the top off and then run your knife down the side where the segments meet and it'll just break apart. Usually there's about four or five segments that you have to split. I like to do this in a large bowl because it helps that the pomegranate seeds will sink to the bottom and any white membrane that's left on them will float to the top. Once all of your pomegranates are de-seeded, strain the seeds. In a large pot over medium heat, add your pomegranate seeds, one cup of water, and one fourth cup of brown sugar. Stir and let that simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes until all of the juices have broken down from your seeds. Strain the mixture and pour the syrup back into the pot. Place it over medium heat and reduce until you get a true syrup consistency. Set that aside to cool while we move on to the cake batter. Now this is important. These ingredients should be room temperature. If they are not, this will not be the same. Add one stick of room temp butter into a large bowl and beat it with an electric mixer until it is smooth and creamy. No lumps at all. That's what that means. Then add one cup of granulated sugar and beat that together until your arm is about to fall off for about eight minutes. We are going for light and fluffy, so don't disappoint. Then add a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a teaspoon of fine sea salt and mix until uniform. Add the eggs in one at a time, adding the next after the prior one is completely incorporated. When the last one is added, mix until everything is once again light and fluffy. In a separate bowl, sift your flour, baking powder, and baking soda. Don't skip this step. Add one third of your sifted flour mixture into your batter and mix until just incorporated. Do the same thing with one half of the sour cream and one half of the milk. Repeat these steps until all of your ingredients are added and everything is completely incorporated. Be careful not to overmix here. We don't want to develop extra gluten in our batter. Using a stick of butter, coat every millimeter of the inside of a baking sheet and dust it with flour to prevent sticking. When I say every millimeter, I mean every millimeter. This is a very sugary and very sticky cake. If you are not diligent with how you are buttering your pan, it will stick and I will have to cry for you and that's it. Pour your batter into the pan and spread it evenly. Retrieve your cooled syrup, remove two to three tablespoons for making your icing later, and pour the rest over the top of all of your batter. Using a butter knife or the back of a utensil, swirl your cake and syrup together to give it that beautiful marbling. Bake the cake in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes or until the toothpick comes out clean from the center and then let it cool completely. While the cake is baking, brown your butter. To do this, put a stick of salted butter into a small pan over medium heat and let that cook until you have a golden brown buttery goodness. This usually takes about 10 minutes and happens quite quickly after your butter is foaming, so be careful. My butter came out a little bit dark, but it was okay. Just don't be as silly as me and keep an eye on your butter the whole time. In a heat proof bowl, sift in three cups of powdered sugar. When your butter is finished, pull it off the heat and add directly into your bowl. Have an electric mixer on hand and whisk immediately to dissolve the sugar. Quickly also add the remaining two to three tablespoons of syrup and one fourth cup of heavy cream. Mix this until everything is dissolved and together. Add more cream or powdered sugar as needed to reach the desired consistency. And finally, it's time to assemble. Taking your cool cake and the back of a spoon, evenly spread your frosting across the top and then optionally garnish it with some fresh pomegranate seeds and fresh moon leaves. So it was a little bit of a journey to get here, but it was absolutely delicious and completely worth it. This cake is buttery, it's tart, that syrup turned into a perfect jelly consistency, and the brown butter icing really completes the flavor profile with that little bit of nuttiness. 
but don't take my word for it. Try it yourself. I've got the full recipe linked in the description box, and I even go into detail about how you can save a bit of time using pomegranate juice instead of fresh pomegranate. So definitely check that out. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel to see next week's video that is going to be absolutely amazing. And I will see you then.